Good morning. Our sermon title this morning is Take Care How You Listen. There's actually three important phrases in this passage of Scripture. There's take care how you listen. And the second one is what he thinks he has. And the third one is those who hear and do. So we'll find all those in Luke chapter 8, 16 through 21. Luke chapter 8, 16 through 21. To give some context to what we're going to be looking at, Jesus has just got done telling them about the parable of the sower or the parable of the soils. And he's went through to explicitly explain it and that they will be going out to sow the seed, which is the gospel, that they would be going out talking about God sending his son who's lived and died and rose again and he came to save sinners and that we are to repent and confess and submit and we will receive eternal life and that he's coming again. And he says, as you go out to share these things, um, there are going to be four different ways people are going to respond to you. Some will be like hard soil. Uh, it will just bounce off of them, won't penetrate. they have an indifferent heart. Some will be like shallow soil that uh, they'll spring up really fast. They'll be really excited about it but the, their heart is very selfish and when it gets turned off of a focus on them, they will fall away. Then there will be some that, like the weedy soil, who will try to treat Jesus like an add-on to their life, just an add-on Jesus. Uh, they, they, they can have everything else and not get rid of sin in their life and just add Jesus to them. And they'll get choked out by that sin that they don't take care of. And then some will fall on the good soil, and that's a surrendered heart, a surrendered heart, a heart that's soft and deep and, and clean. And so Jesus is preparing them to be catching people. That takes us back to Luke chapter 5, uh, verse 10. When Jesus is with Peter in the boat and he tells Peter to put down the nets and Peter doesn't want to, but then because it's the Lord, he says he will. And there's this great catch of fish and Peter realizes that he has someone who is very special and holy in his presence. And he kneels down and he says, get away from me and I'm, an, I'm not worthy to be around you. But Jesus then tells him, uh, you're going to be a fisher of men or a catcher of people. And what Jesus is doing here is he's preparing his disciples for the mission because that mission, that commission, that great commission is the same today. There needs to be a continual witness of Jesus to our world and therefore we prepare um, to leave this place with the gospel, to hand off that baton of the gospel to the next generation. So in light of that, he, we go into verse 16. He says, no one, after lighting a lamp, covers it with a blanket or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a lampstand so that those who come in may see its light. Now, this is an obvious illustration, obvious lesson that's here. So you have a lamp that was more like a little bowl with some oil in it with a wick, and uh, you, uh, you, you wouldn't put that under a basket or a bowl or something like that because the oxygen would be depleted and it would go out. Or you wouldn't put it under a bed. Well, their beds weren't like ours that are elevated. That's just a mat that would be on the floor. And you would put that lamp down and then put the mat over it. No, it would do the same thing. It would put it out. That's not why you have a light. The light is to be seen and put up on that lampstand to be seen. Well, keep this in, in context of what he's talking about. He's talking about the sowers, and, and the sower has the light. And, and what does he do with it? Well, I want to give you four different characteristics about this sower. And the first one is, is the sower is evangelistic. Evangelistic. This is The sower is one who puts the light out on the lampstand so others can see. He doesn't hide this message about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, no one, he says there, no, no sower of his would hide the message. 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people with his possessions, of his possession, so that you may proclaim, there's that evangelistic effort there, you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness and into this marvelous light. Now, you're, you're maybe not a Billy Graham. Most of us aren't. 
but you are a child of his who is available and ready. And you've been given this great gift of salvation. And what are we to do with it? What, what do his sowers do with it? They, they share it with others. They put it on the lampstand so others can see it. So let me read this passage of scripture in 1 John. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Here is from John, the disciple of Jesus, who's a sower. And he's also speaking of the other disciples. When he says, what was from the beginning, he's referring to Jesus there, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have observed, what we have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, there's relating to Jesus again, that life was revealed and we have seen it and we testify and we declare to you. There's that evangelistic effort of the sower. We declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. And what we have seen and heard, we also declare to you. So there it is, so that you may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. It's evangelistic because if we are going to have a relationship with the Father and with the Son, it's, it's all based upon us um, hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the sower is evangelistic. The second one is in verse 17. It says, For nothing is concealed that won't be revealed, and nothing hidden that won't be made known and brought to the light. A very simple lesson here is that everything, everything will be revealed. So the second thing about the sower is the sower is authentic. And we're really authentic no matter what. If we are for God or against God, it, it, everything will be revealed. So it will be revealed who we are authentic to. But his sowers are authentic to him. And that little axiom, that little saying, Jesus says a couple other times. Let me read one to you where he uses it in light of the good. In Matthew chapter 10, starting verse 26, Jesus is speaking and he says, Therefore, don't be afraid of them, or meaning the world, since there is nothing covered that won't be uncovered and nothing hidden that won't be made Known. So there it is, that little phrase again. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. So God is saying, when Jesus is saying, when he speaks something to us in the dark, we are to share it in the light. And what you hear in a whisper, proclaim on the housetops. Don't fear those who kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Aren't two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's consent. But even the hairs of your head have been counted. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Therefore, everyone who will acknowledge me before others, I will also acknowledge him before my father in heaven. You're authentically his and you're authentically relating to him. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven, because God is authentic. Don't, don't assume that I can, came to bring peace on the earth, but I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I came to turn a man against his father, a daughter against his, her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be members of his own household. The one who loves a father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And one who loves a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever doesn't take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Anyone who finds his life will lose it, and anyone who loses his life because of me will find it. We need to be authentically uh, gods, and that will be revealed. That will come out that if we are that. And then let me give you one more, because he uses it in the negative also in Luke chapter 12, Verses 1, 2, and 3, um, he's talking about religious hypocrisy. And he says, it says, Meanwhile, a crowd of many thousands came together so that they were trampling on one another. Just imagine how big that crowd is. 
Uh, he began to say to his disciples first, be on your guard against the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Beware of these religious leaders who say one thing and do the other and, and get all the credit for it. And he says, that's beware of that kind of action. And then he uses the phrase, there is nothing covered that won't be uncovered, nothing hidden that won't be made known. And then he says, therefore, whatever you have said in the dark. Remember before he said, whatever I've told you in the dark, proclaim it. Well, he says here, therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light. So anything that you think you can say that no one else is going to hear, uh, that's going to be brought out. And whatever you've whispered in an ear in private rooms will be proclaimed to the housetop. So again, you're going to be authentic in one way or another, but a sower is authentic toward God. Verse 18, therefore take care how you listen. There's that first phrase, for whoever has more will be given to him, whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has, there's that second phrase, will be taken away from him. Now all four soils heard, they all heard. In verse 12 of chapter 8, it says, the seed along the path are those who have heard. If you Verse 13, and the seed on the rock are those who, when they hear. And verse 14, as the seed that fell among the thorns, these are the ones who, when they have heard. And then verse 15, but the seed in the good ground, these are the ones having heard the word with an honest and good heart. Now, one out of the four was a good listener. Uh, good listeners make good company. They make good friends. They make good learners. They make good teachers. They make good counselors. Good listeners are, 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 are tremendously important. So how you listen determines your next move. How you listen really determines your next move. So this sower is evangelistic. He's authentic, but he's also, the sower is fruitful fruitful because he's listening his his life is being added to by God um, it's growing in God here's a couple good verses John 10:10 10, 10 says a thief comes only to steal kill and destroy I have come that they may have life and he could have and it stopped right there but they may have life but it goes on to say and have it in abundance so you just don't have life your life is just abounding more and more in God or John 1, 16 says, Indeed, we have received grace. That would be plenty. But he says grace upon grace from his fullness. The Christian, the sower that he's talking about here, is someone whose life is abounding. It's fruitful in Christ. And what he thinks he has will be taken away. Well, if we kind of go back through the soils, the hard soil, that person thinks they're good enough. They don't need God. Uh, that, that God's probably for other people, but not for them. Uh, that'll be taken away. Shallow people, shallow soil think, well, the, I got a good feeling about this. And the answer is, is how good they feel. And, and as long as they're happy, rather than as long as they're holy, uh, that'll be taken away. And the weedy soil, um, well, I can have it all. I, I got enough Jesus. I got just enough Jesus. And that sin in my life, well, it's not as bad as other people's sin. Well, even that will be taken away. All those excuses will be taken away from them. Um, so now there's a little pause here um, because something happens here. And it's an important, it's, I don't want to skip over this. It's in the passage. So it says, verse 19 says, Then his mother and brothers came to him. Um, but they could not meet with him because of the crowd. Then verse 20, he was told, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. And I don't want to jump over this because I want us to realize that the Bible is what guides us. The Bible is our, our where we base what we believe off of. And, and this little passage here helps us to understand something um, that goes against what has been taught um, in a major part of our society, about Mary. But it's about Jesus' family here, Jesus' physical family. And just simply put, Jesus' mother was Mary, Mary who was met by the angel, Gabriel. Uh, Jesus' earthly father was Joseph, 
Now, it's his, not his biological father, because his biological father is God the Father, but, but his, his earthly father, uh, the one that raised him in Nazareth, was a man named Joseph. Now, Mary's other sons and Jesus' half-brothers were James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. Um, now, this is where it gets a little sticky, because there in the second century, there came this thought and this teaching that Mary was a perpetual virgin, that Mary had no other children other than Jesus. But the Bible says differently. And the Bible in uh, Matthew chapter 13, 53 through 58, it says when Jesus had finished these parables, he left there and he went to his hometown. So now he's in his hometown. These are people who, who he grew up with. He, he lived there for 30 years, about 30 years. And, and they began to teach them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers? Isn't this the carpenter's son? So they identified him as the son of the carpenter, Joseph. And, it, so, and then they said, isn't his mother called Mary? So they identified his father, they identified his mother, Mary, and then they go on to say, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. So here are the people in that time period, well before the second century, who are at the place and saying, this is Jesus' physical family makeup. And then it says, and his sisters, aren't they, all, aren't they all with us? So where does he get all these things? And they were offended by him. So Jesus had at least two sisters. And I just bring that out because we want to make sure that what we believe is based off of what is in the Word of God and not man-made. Um, and, and, and so it can be supported, very strongly supported from the Scripture that Jesus had this earthly family um, that was made up of these components that are there. But now he's going to make a huge distinction because in verse 21 it says, But he replied to them, after he found out his mother and brothers were outside, he replied to them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear and do the word of God. That's that third phrase. He, the sower is evangelistic for Christ. The sower is authentic to Christ. The sower is fruitful from Christ. And now the sower is obedient. He's obedient. It's one who hears and does. And the distinction, the clear distinction that Jesus makes here in this passage and other passages is that there's a clear distinction between his earthly family and his heavenly family. And that that distinction is still true today. There is a possibility, this is what's haunting, there's a possibility that our earthly family might not be completely our heavenly family. That there might be some in our earthly family that are not a part of our heavenly family. And this drives me to a point a couple weeks ago about looking at our children and looking at our grandchildren and, and the spiritual influence that we put upon their lives and try to feed into their lives, that I come up with this question, what is your burning passion for your children or grandchildren? I mean, in, in light of there are some in your earthly family that might not be a part of your heavenly family, What's your burning passion for them? Is it that they, they're, uh, they, they get to be a part of all these clubs or they get to hit the ball or that they get a great education or that they are better themselves than you are um, or something like that? Or in light of this, is, or is it, is it that they would be a part of the heavenly family? Now, that makes me think of this question. How do I up Jesus in their lives? I mean, how do I make Jesus more relevant, more real in their lives? How, 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 do, I, how do I keep Jesus ever before them? And uh, the number one way of doing this is this thing of the sower right here is that you need to be obedient. You need to be one who hears and does. Hears and does in front of them. That they see you obedient to God. So let me wrap it up with this. The sower is evangelistic. Evangelistic. That, that light is out there. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That 
He's evangelistic. The, the sower is authentic. He's out there. He's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The sower is fruitful. He's, uh, he's a person that's growing, av availing themselves to grow more in Christ. And the sower is obedient. Uh, they say the name Lord in the right way that I am actually a doer of the Lord. Uh, and that brings us back to the question that we looked at a few weeks ago in Luke chapter 6, verse 46, where Jesus asked this question that is really important. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord? Uh, why do you call me Master? Why do you call me the person that uh, you belong to and don't do the things I say? Well, why do you do that? Because what we're learning in this passage here is that if there's something about Christians, Christians sow. They sow. We've had some hashtags. One was hashtag wisdom wins. Wisdom wins that one that wisdom wins when you follow after Christ. You actually follow after him. Uh, the next hashtag was that weeds win. Hashtag weeds win. Uh, when we don't get sin out of our lives, when we don't handle it God's way and we let it linger, it takes over the garden, takes over our lives. And this one this morning, hashtag sowers sow. Sowers actually sow. And so this morning, let's close in prayer, but let's, uh, let's, let's ask God um, that we would represent uh, this kind of person who is evangelistic, who's authentic, who's fruitful, and obedient. Heavenly Father, help us this morning to realize how important it is that we represent who you are sending out. Lord, that we wouldn't put this light, this, event, this message of salvation, we wouldn't hide it. Lord, that we would be authentic, that we would, that people would see that this really, there's, this has permeated our lives and there's nothing hidden in our lives. Um, actually, if they, if they dig up something, they just find more of you. Lord, I, I pray that we would be fruitful, that we would be persons who are ever digging into the word and growing in our relationship with you. And Lord, that we would be obedient, that we would not just hear the word, but we would be doers of the word, that we would call you Lord in the right way. So Lord Jesus, this morning, may we have that hashtag, sowers sow. And I'm a sower of the seed of the word of God. Open up opportunities this week, Lord, for us to let the light shine that is authentically within us. We ask this in your precious name. Amen.